Hi folks, welcome back. So I started shooting this video as a one big capacitor video and it turned into a humongous, like over an hour long video. So I'm splitting it up into short sections. So here's the first section, which is a kind of introduction to capacitors and capacitors with a constant current. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Um, this time we're gonna talk about capacitors. I'm gonna try and do this whole video with little to no maths uh, and any maths that I do do I will explain in Eng like plain English um, so that people who've not studied any maths can understand because I think that's one of the big problems with things like capacitors it's very um, efficient to describe capacitors using like complex numbers and um, exponentials and things like that which while they're not super complicated um, I think you forget how many building blocks there are that you need to know to be able to you can't just jump in at complex numbers and exponentials if you've missed you know trigonometry and um, indices and all these other things that um, you know build up to that so we're going to jump straight in by first looking at capacitors in the time domain okay so before we dive into the analysis of capacitors uh, why don't we talk a little bit about what is a capacitor in the first place so Capacitor, this is the circuit symbol for a capacitor at least. So I'm going to talk about this first off in kind of layman's terms, what we might already know or what we do already know from what we've done before. So we've got two parallel plates. These are usually made of something like metal. There's two connecting wires and they're separated by some sort of insulating material. What we do is we apply voltage across the capacitor and this puts charge on these plates. Now, as with everything in the world, there are some complex physics that describes all of the movement of this charge and, you know, the electric fields between the two plates. We are not going to get into any of that um, today, but what we are going to talk about is why is this special? What we're doing here is we're storing charge on these plates and we call charge Q. And we say that if we've got charge stored on a capacitor, that charge is equal to the voltage that we've applied to the capacitor and that those two are related by some factor we call the capacitance of a capacitor. That's what the capacitance means. It's basically saying for any given voltage, uh, how much charge can we fit on these plates? So the capacitance is a function of like the size and the shape and the material and the distance of the gap. Why is this important? Because the storing of charge gives capacitors memory. So why capacitors are so useful is that they can remember things that have happened in the past, which most circuit elements can't do. Resistors, you can only measure what is going on on a resistor, across a resistor, at that moment. It can't tell you what the charge was a second ago, two seconds ago. Whereas, because of this ability to store charge, capacitors can do that, and that's what makes them so useful uh, for things like oscillators, where you can use capacitors to set timings. So you can say, after so much charge has been accumulated, then your voltage will be a known voltage, because you know the capacitance, right? This is really useful, and we've used this already. I uh, had oscillator circuit, and that relied on the fact that charge would build up on this capacitor, and that it would get to a known level in a known amount of time. So why don't we move on now, now that we know very basically what a capacitor is, why don't we go and look at how does a capacitor charge up. What we're going to look at here is what happens when you apply a constant current to a capacitor. So this little symbol here, I don't think we've seen this before, this is a constant current source. You don't usually see them that much, but we're using one right now. That's what this symbol, little circle with an arrow in it, constant current source, and it means you've got conventional current flowing this way. So what happens to our capacitor? Well if we look at our little equation up here, it doesn't really look like it's helping us out very much. We've got charge here and we've got voltage here, but we've got current source here. So we've not got charge or voltage. Have we? Well we actually have, because when charge moves, we call it current. That's what current is. Current is the rate of flow of charge. What we're going to do here is we're going to look at this equation but only with respect to how these things are changing so we're gonna we know that down here 
So we've got Q here, and when Q changes, we now know that we can call that I for current. And then we know that equals C doesn't change for a given capacitor. So the next thing we've got is this V. Now is there some way that we can represent how the voltage is changing with time? So when I say with respect to time, that just means as time is changing, Q is also changing. There's a little shorthand for when we're talking about how something is changing and we say it's dV and the D just stands for delta, which is just commonly used for a small change in V. So we're saying for a small change in V over a small change in time, that is equal to the current. So without going into the maths of it, because I, I promised you I wouldn't and I'm not going to, you can look at this two ways. Either the current is going to tell us how the voltage is changing with time. So if there's lots of current, this voltage changing thingy is going to be very high, which means the voltage is going to change very quickly. If there's not much current, the voltage is going to change very slowly. And vice versa, if the voltage is changing very quickly, then that's going to mean there's lots of current flowing through the capacitor. And conversely, when the voltage isn't changing very quickly, there's going to be not very much current flowing through a capacitor. So capacitors are one of these things where you're really thinking about, when you're analysing what a capacitor is doing, you're thinking about the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the capacitor. You have to look at the capacitor with how it's changing. You can't really look at it like a resistor where you look at it in one instance of time. But we're more interested in how the voltage across a capacitor is changing. We can now say that, right, so there's going to be some relationship between the amount of current and how quickly the voltage changes across this capacitor. What that is going to be is, for a constant current, for every moment in time, this current is always the same. So let's just say this current is one amp. So for every point in time on this graph, this is time, this current is equal to one. So I'll just put that on here as a straight line. So let's just say that that's one as well, just to keep all the numbers nice and straightforward. The rate that the voltage changes per time period is also going to be 1. And again, what does that mean in like plain English? Well, that just means that, okay, for if while there's a 1 uh, amp of current for every little fraction of time, we'll, we won't split time up that much, we'll split time up into 3 seconds, that for every one of these periods, the voltage is going to change by 1 volt. So for every 1 second, so the change in time is 1 second, the change in voltage is going to be 1 as well, to make these two things equal. If we start from zero, that means we're going to go across one and up one, and then we're going to go across another one, and then we're going to go up another one. And then we're going to go across another one again, and then we're going to go up another one. And so now, after three seconds, we charge up the capacitor to three volts. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. So the takeaway from this, a constant current applied to a capacitor will give you a straight line. That's kind of cool. We call this a ramp. Um, and so now if we took the co constant current source, let's say we had some switch that we could switch between the constant current going onto the capacitor and then the same constant current but coming off the capacitor. So if we switch that around, so what we can say now about the current is that from the perspective of the capacitor, there's now minus one amps, let's call it. So by convention, we always say current is flowing like this and the voltage drop is like this. And so if the current is actually flowing this way, then we just say that it's a negative current flowing this way. Um, that might seem kind of a confusing thing to do, but it's just to keep everything squared up and make sure all the maths works out, you know. So let's look, remember, the current is proportional to how the voltage changes. So if we've set the current to minus one, then now our time is gonna be still one. We can't have minus time, right? Time goes in one direction, unfortunately. To make these two sides equal, so if this is minus one, we want this to be minus one as well. So this has to be minus one. Ah, okay. So now for every one step in time, we're gonna have to go down a volt. Okay, so we'll go across one step, down one volt, and then we'll go across one step and down another volt, across one step and down another volt. And now we're back to zero volts. And so we've got a little ramp. And if we carry on switching this up and down, and up and down, and up and down at this period, and we've got ourselves a nice triangle wave. And again, if you think back to our little oscillator circuit, 
this is exactly what we've been doing. The oscillator has been going up and down and up and down and applying current this way and then draining the current off this way and we've been generating this triangle wave. Remember I showed you way back in my first video? Voltage here went like this and the output voltage here went like this. And that looks similar to what we have there. Obviously we were looking at voltage and this is current so don't get confused there. So that's what happens when we apply a constant current. So that's it for that section. Come back next time where I talk about how that little um, op-amp circuit that I was just talking about is actually a constant voltage charging and how that all works. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. Ring the bell. Find me on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, watch more of my videos here, some over here. And I'll see you all next time. Take care.